Time for baseball here in Athens, Ohio, as we welcome you to the confines of Bob Wren Stadium. It's the rubber match, this series finale between the Ohio Bobcats and the Central Michigan Chippewas. Alongside my broadcast partner, Cedric Ranger, my name is Sam Hyman. We're glad you're with us here on Bobcat TV. Cedric, when you look at this series finale, what is it going to take for these two teams to find a way to win this series? Well, Sam, these games, especially the Sunday games in these MAC series, tend to be very high scoring. The only thing that can keep that from getting out of hand is the pitching and the defense. And that is the key for both of these teams, Sam. And Ohio's win yesterday, they were able to go and get a lot of hits on the starting pitcher of Central Michigan, who gave up seven hits in that game. Inversely, in game number one, when the Chippewa was, were able to defeat the Bobcats. The Bobcats gave up six runs from their starting pitching. Now it's going to come down here on game three. Which starting pitcher is going to outshine the other? Which team is going to put themselves in position early to close out this series with the victory and put the Mac on notice? All right, there's a look at one of the starting pitchers for this matchup, and it is the lefty Trent Spoon, the junior, making his fourth start of the season. Six feet tall, 210 pounds from Bourbon A, Illinois. And his last start, four and a third innings, four earned runs, two walks, and gave up three hits. And for Ohio, you look back at what happened yesterday, Mitchell Hemmen was able to work out of a lot of jams. It, it wasn't a situation where you had the big inning. Central Michigan could not get the big inning, and that is what Trent Spoon is going to try to do in this game, is limit the big inning from this high octane Central Michigan offense who comes into this game with a 10 and eight record, one and one in the Mid-American Conference. Let's take a glance at the lineup for the Chippewas leading off Marquise Jackson who makes his way to the batter's box. He's followed by Robbie Morgan the fourth, Jacob Donahue, Garrett Navarra, Luke Sefcik, Nick Dardis, Justin Simpson, Jake Brill, and Christian Mitchell will round out the starting lineup for Central Michigan as we get set for baseball on a Sunday. And the first pitch is right down the pipe for a called strike. Our first pitch time at two o'clock. Our first pitch temperature, Cedric, 34 degrees. It's a chilly one here in Athens. Yeah, can you believe, Sam, that this game is actually warmer than what <laughs> it was like yesterday? It was a very blistery day. Seems like the wind speeds are down a little bit, so not as much of a jet stream to a right field. And not as many flurries. I don't think we've seen a flurry uh, so far on this fine Sunday as we have a one ball, two strike count. And Spoon delivers the breaking ball, fools Marquise Jackson, the left fielder, who strikes out to start this ball game. Jackson moving up in the lineup. He was in the three spot the first two games of this series. And the next batter is Robbie Morgan, the fourth redshirt sophomore first baseman who leads the team with four home runs. Trent Spoon delivers, and that's a first pitch strike. Nothing and one. The defensive alignment for Ohio left to right in the outfield, Gideon Antle, A.J. Roush, and Will Sturrock. 0-1 pitch, paints the outer corner for a called strike, nothing and two. Colin Kasperbauer plays third. Billy Adams, the only freshman for Ohio making the start today. He's at short, Alex Finney at second, Alec Patino at first. And there is back-to-back -back strikeouts for Trent Spoon to start this game. And Cedric, as you mentioned, runs could be high in this game. If Trent Spoon keeps this up, look out, Central Michigan. Yeah, he's certainly off to a great start. Absolutely dealing out there. Three pitch strikeout. That's what you like to see if you're a cat. Next batter, Jacob Donahue, the junior right fielder who is sizzling hot in this series. Four of eight. And that's three first pitch strikes for Trent Spoon, the Southpaw from Illinois. A one pitch is just outside, one ball and one strike. Mason Minzy does the catching, by the way, to round out the defense for Craig Moore's team. This pitch is blasted, foul right side, a one ball and two strikes to Jacob Donahue. Yeah, first player on this Central Michigan squad to get any contact so far there is his timing. He's just a little tad early on it, but he's starting to get it. Fastball. Rockets high, two balls and two strikes. 
You mentioned the Chippewas come in 10 and 8 overall, 1 and 1 in the MAC. Ohio 5 and 11, 3 and 2 in the MAC as the 2 2 is looped in the air to shallow center field. Roush sprints in, and A.J. Roush will make the play to retire the side. A 1 2 3 inning for Trent Spoon. It's the rubber match between Ohio and Central Michigan from Bob Wren Stadium. Come back and join us for the home half of the first inning. Ohio set to bat on Bobcat TV. Back in chilly Athens, Ohio, alongside Cedric Granger, I'm Sam Hyman, glad you're with us on Bobcat TV. The home half of the first inning. The Ohio Bobcats set to bat, and they are set to face that man right there, number 20 for Central Michigan. It's Garrett Navarra, who makes his fourth start of the season, a 4.86 ERA and 16 and two thirds innings. His last outing against Sacramento State, Cedric, he struck out 13 batters. This is a young man that pitches and hits, so Quite the uh, the specimen out there on the hill today. Yeah, if you're a fan of Shoei Otani of the Angels, um, we're starting to see some players that are rising through the ranks and going with two-way sort of dynamics. You look at not only him, but also a couple other players on this Chippewa squad that can play both as a batter as well as going on the mound to pitch. I mean, talk about versatility. Very impressive, and he pitches exclusively from the stretch. A.J. Roush leads off for the Bobcats, the redshirt sophomore center fielder. One ball and no strikes. Navarra kicks and delivers. And Roush bangs it high and foul to the right side. One ball and one strike. The rest of the lineup for Ohio, Colin Casper, Bauer bats second. Mason Minzy hits third. Alec Patino, the junior first baseman, bats fourth. Will Sturick is the number five hitter, followed by Gideon Antle, the junior left fielder as Roush pops it on the ground towards the second baseman. A little double pump from Sefcik, but he gets Roush in time. And that is out number one in the bottom of the first inning. The bottom of the order, Cole Williams. We'll talk a lot about Cole Williams. He hits seventh, Alex Finney bats eighth, and Billy Adams swings ninth as Casper Bauer makes his way to the plate for Ohio. Fifth year senior, third baseman. And the first pitch is rocketed high in the air. Playable in left field for Marquise Jackson. And there's two up, two down to start the bottom of the first inning. Yeah, you gotta respect first pitch swinging, but right now it seems like the pitchers have been determining the game flow early. And look at this, we, we're getting a look at some of these guys trying to stay warm. Marquise Jackson, some some jumping jacks. In, in a game that is played outside and it's not like a soccer or, 
or football where you're not constantly moving, these outfielders are going to have to find a way to stay warm when the baseball is not being hit to them in the outfield because it's only 34 degrees. It'll certainly be something. They do have heaters in each of the dugouts, but when you're out there in the outfield, you get to feel the full force of the frigid temperatures out there. Two down. Mason Minzy steps in, the switch hitting catcher, and the count is one ball and one strike. The rest of the alignment for Central Michigan defensively. Jackson, of course, in left field. Jake Brill makes his first appearance of the series in center. Jacob Donahue plays right field. Here comes the 1 1, and the backdoor curve locks on the outer corner for strike two. Christian Mitchell is the third baseman. Justin Simpson plays short. Luke Sefcik over at second. Robbie Morgan, the fourth, played outfield yesterday. He's the first baseman today, and Nick Dardis does the catching. 1 2. Minzy does not offer, and the count levels at two balls and two strikes. Yeah, a bit of a breaking ball there. Uh, good eye discipline and really competitive at bat so far from Minzy. Fifth year senior Mason Minzy had an RBI double yesterday. 2-2 two -two is banged up in the air, foul to the right side. Rubber match here on this Sunday afternoon in Athens, Ohio. Ohio dropped the series opener by a final count of eight to five, but the Bobcats responded with an impressive 11 to seven win yesterday. The 2-2, two -two. and that changeup moves outside, ball three. Big pitch up coming early in this game for Navarra, who is making his 59th career appearance on the mound, the graduate student from Sterling Heights, Michigan. And Minzy drills this one high and deep to center field. Bye-bye baseball. Touch them all, Mason Minzy in the rubber match. Ohio starts off on the right foot, one to nothing. And after the win yesterday, the Bobcats, the sentiment from Cole Williams was the job is not finished. And Mason Minzy really taking that to heart today. And there were not a ton of smiles after the game. Of course, you had the celebration after the win. But there was still work to do to win this series. And if you're the Bobcats, that's exactly how you want to get started. It's a two-strike, two-out bomb right over center field. How about that for the switch hitter? Alec Patino behind in the count, nothing and one. What a story for Mason Minzy too. He's been quite the journeyman in his college career. Started at Texas Tech, then went to Wabash Valley, a junior college, and uh, finishing up his career at Ohio. Spending a, a couple of seasons, now in actually his third season with the Bobcats. 0-2 oh, the count to Alec Patino after Minzy sending a message early Patino strikes out swinging, and that will end the bottom of the first. But not before Mason Minzy with now his team leading fourth home run of the season. The Bobcats trying to take down the defending MAC tournament champions in this series. The rubber match continues with the top of the second after this on Bobcat TV.
Top of the second inning from Bob Wren Stadium. Back with Cedric Granger, I'm Sam Hyman. Well, this Ohio team out to a one nothing lead thanks to Mason Minzie's fourth home run of the season. A solo shot to dead center. Trent Spoon back to work and that is the fourth consecutive first pitch strike from Spoon. Garrett Navarra at the plate for Central Michigan. He is the starting pitcher. You are not hearing a, a miscue on, on that in that regard. He does hit for himself. And he rips this one. One hop to Patino at first, one away. And the next batter will be Luke Sefcik, the redshirt freshman, second baseman. Well, Cedric, one thing that Coach Moore talked about after the win yesterday, one word stuck out. Yeah, and that word is resilient, Sam, as right in that last inning we got to see a situation where Minzy back against the wall, two outs, two strikes, an opportunity for Navarra to get out of the inning and to keep it tied up going into the top of the second. However, he was showed the resilience, was there, staying competitive at that at-bat, and he was able to go yard. Yeah, very impressive A.B. from Mason Minzy, fifth-year senior. And we know that it's very early in the season as that fastball paints the outer corner for strike two, one ball and two strikes to the right-handed hitting Sefcik. It is early in the season, but this is a massive series when you think about it big picture as the one-two just misses inside. Two balls and two strikes. Central Michigan, the defending MAC tournament champions from a season ago. 2-2 two -two pitch, and Sefcik knocks it up in the air to center field. Roush patrols back and makes the play. Two down in the top of the second inning. Yeah, you make a great point about that, Sam. For Central Michigan, with the MAC being only 11 teams, uh, they were the odd man out, or odd team out, I should say, yeah. during that first weekend. So this is their MAC opening series. You always want to start it off setting a great tone. The Cats, they are able to beat Bowling Green to get their MAC season started. And Central Michigan, they want to get their MAC season started with a victory as well. Yeah, the Chippewas have been the talk of one of the teams in the Mid-American Conference everybody's been talking about as A.J. Roush backs up and on one pitch, Nick Dardis is retired. So how about Trent Spoon in his fourth start of the season? Six up, six down, and he's pitching with a one-run advantage. Well, we will go to the bottom of the second inning after this on a chilly Sunday, mid-30 degree day in March. It's madness, right? March madness. <laughs> we'll be back in a moment in the bottom of Bottom of the second inning at Bob Wren Stadium, Ohio and Central Michigan in the series finale. The Bobcats sending a message early 
on the Mason Minzy solo home run in the bottom of the first. Will Sturick leads off the home half of the second inning. Garrett Navarra delivers, and Sturick, a rare bunt attempt, springs up in the air, foul into the seats. And the count is nothing and one. Well, Garrett Navarra, we touched on it earlier, but he is also hitting today. He's a two-way player and had a pretty good outing last time against Sacramento State where he struck out 13 batters in five innings. But is a little bit iffy to start this outing and to go behind early, certainly from a mental standpoint, it, it stings a bit. Certainly can, but you have to get yourself into two different mentalities first. You have to be right there when you're a batter. That's a whole different mindset than going to the mound to pitch. And he's been fantastic as a batter in this series. Four for 10. Yep. Batting 400 in this series, pretty impressive. And now he's trying to prevent the Bobcats from batting against him. Two balls and one strike. And Sturrock chases upstairs. Two balls and two strikes now to Sturrock. So Central Michigan won the first game eight to five. The Chippewas jumped out to a 7-1 lead after three innings thanks to homers from Nick Dardis and Garrett Navarra on Friday night. As the 2-2 is whack back foul, still two balls and two strikes. So Central Michigan ended up winning that game eight to five. And then yesterday, Ohio recorded 13 hits. Eight of the nine batters had at least one hit. It was, it was quite the day offensively for the Bobcats. 2-2 two -two is lifted, foul to the right side. Count remains two balls and two strikes. This is the second straight weekend, Cedric, we've seen Ohio respond after losing the series opener. Yeah, it's pretty impressive to be able to do that where when you lose that first game, the pressure is definitely on to be able to win the last couple in the series. And you've got to defend your home field. 2-2 two -two is hammered high in the air, center field. Look at it fly. It's gone. Will Sturick. And Ohio sending a message early in the series finale. Two homers. It's 2 nothing Bobcats. It's two homers in the game, but for Sturrock, this is his second home run of the series. You talked about that 8-5 loss by the Bobcats, but one of the bright spots was Will Sturrock's home run. It was a three RBI homer, and now he gets himself a solo shot to add to his resume. Took that high cheddar and knocked it way out of here. Not quite to Court Street, in the direction of Court Street, but my goodness, that was a bomb from Will Sturrock. Yeah, we're looking at around 400 feet for each of the home runs today. They've been over center field, as it seemed like uh, right field was the key place where a lot of the home runs were going last weekend. And even yesterday, with the wind speeds going from left to right, it seems like we do still have a moderate wind that is kind of going from left field to right field a little bit. But center field has been the go-to spot for the Cats today. Here's Gideon Antle, junior left fielder, junior college transfer, squares to bunt, pulls back outside, one ball and no strike. So how about Ohio in this series? Today, two home runs. Cole Williams hit two home runs by himself yesterday. A.J. Roush also hit a home run. So that's five home runs in not even two full games for the Bobcats. Yeah, they certainly have been rolling and they've really hit their stride when it comes to be able to go yard. And that's something that can get everybody on their feet and get everybody in the dugout feeling warm. We, when you talked to Cole Williams yesterday, he was talking about as soon as he hit that home run, he was buzzing. He was warmed up, no doubt about it, as this is foul down the right field line. So in totality in this series, if you go back to the Friday opener, Ohio has six home runs in this series. Very impressive for Craig Moore's team, who said at the beginning of the season, offense is our strength. The one-two, breaking ball dives low, two balls and two strikes to Gideon Antle. Missed the first three games of the season with a hamstring injury, but has been outstanding since
Knocks this one up in the air. Shallow center field. Jake Brill makes the play for out number one. In the bottom of the second Cole. inning. Antle hit 340 on the season. Certainly a bright spot as Cole Williams heads to the plate. And what a day it was yesterday for, for Cole Williams. Two home runs, five RBIs after he was just three for 17 at the plate the entire season before yesterday. He had three hits all this season. And then yesterday had three hits, so he matched his hit total in one game. Yeah, it's pretty impressive to see what he was able to do as Coach Moore, they were talking with some of the other coaches, seeing if they could create a lineup change uh, and yep. what players would be pretty good on a windy day like that. And with him being a lefty batter, Usually you see a lot of hitters tend to pull when they are swinging, so being able to take advantage of that wind has helped. Another ball to right. Yeah, Sefcik able to make the play easily, and there are two down, but I'm glad you brought that up, by the way, about what Coach Moore said post-game. When, when we spoke to Coach Moore and, and asked him about Cole Williams, and he said, uh, you know, Cole's been working hard all season. He hasn't put his head down. There have been a lot of lefty pitching that they've faced this season, so that's why Cole has been out of the lineup. But Coach Moore had a conversation with Coach McGuire. Coach McGuire, the hitting coach for Ohio, and they exchanged some text messages back and forth about potentially some lineup changes, to your point. And Cole Williams' name came up, and he was a massive help yesterday in the 11-7 victory over Central Michigan as Alex Finney takes a ball 1-0. So let's see if we see another resilient inning for the Bobcats. Two outs have been their specialty for scoring if we look at last game as well as our first run of the day for the Cats. They have come in two out situations. Yeah, yesterday there were a lot of moments including the bottom of the fifth inning where Cole Williams hit a two-run homer with two outs. Really helped Ohio during the middle of that game. 2-0 to Finney. He scorches it foul to the right side. Yeah, Alec Finney in this series really got it going in game two. Game one, a little bit slow for him, 0 for 4, but game two really stepped it up, 2 for 3 with a double. Navarre deals, and Finney sends it foul again to the right side. Two balls and two strikes. Two down, bottom of the second inning from Bob Wren Stadium. Series finale between the Bobcats and Chippewas. The 2-2, a jam shot up in the air. First base side, Robbie Morgan, the fourth, makes the play, and that will retire the side. But Will Sturrock, solo home run. It's his third of the season, and Ohio sends a message for a second straight inning. They lead it 2 nothing. Moving to the third when we come back on a chilly afternoon in Athens. You're watching all the action on Bobcat TV. Seven, eight, nine, due up for Central Michigan here in the top of the third inning. Here's
there's Rufus navigating behind uh, one of the cement columns here inside the beautiful establishment that is Bob Wren Stadium. Back with Cedric Granger, I'm Sam Hyman. As a breaking ball misses outside from Trent Spoon, one ball and no strikes to Justin Simpson. We actually said hello to Rufus uh, yesterday. He walked, walked in the press box on us. Fastball connects on the outside corner for a strike. Yeah, got to love Rufus being able to really just get the energy flowing in Bobberin Stadium. It's pretty cold today. Everybody's bundled up. Uh, but Rufus going around, making sure the energy for the Cats is staying high. You'll see him at all of our sporting events going on. And when you get to the point in the season where it's nice and warm outside, you have baseball and softball both going as well. Rufus in the house. Uh, it really becomes a fun time. Simpson. Grounds this one up the middle, a base hit, and that's the first base runner of the game for Central Michigan. As you can hear the boos from the Ohio faithful, Simpson is aboard the graduate student shortstop. That'll give Jake Brill an opportunity, the junior center fielder. You know, get Trent Spoon there. Now we'll pitch from the stretch for the first time. Runner on first with nobody out in the top of the third inning. Ohio leading 2 nothing behind two homers from Mason Minzy and Will Sturrock. And a great job by Spoon to start off with a strike on the outer corner. Yeah, working with a fastball that time. You could hear a little bit of a cheer from the crowd seeing the heat. Fastball zaps outside, one ball and one strike. Central Michigan's offense for the third straight game without its leading run producer. Danny Westenfeld is out with an injury. We don't know the specifics behind what type of injury, but he has not played in this series, and he has a team-high 17 RBIs. So. Yep. So yeah, Central Michigan's head coach, Jordan Bischel, having to make a couple of adjustments. One adjustment yesterday at work, Kate Preston had his first career home run. But it's tough to miss a guy for three games. It certainly is. You always hope that everybody can stay healthy when all these teams are matched up in the MAC. They are usually seen as measuring stick games, and that's the positive with having permanent opponents like this. And to be able to have teams where you're going to have to deal with injuries and deal with the ups and downs, you just hope people can get healthy. And that is low for ball four. And Jake Brill, who is making his first appearance in this series, draws a walk, his first walk of the season. The junior center fielder, who's making his seventh start, just walked for the first time in 2023. And now Christian Mitchell, sophomore third baseman, comes to the plate as we look at the Central Michigan dugout. A lot of beanies, as expected, you know, mid-30s. Got to rock the beanie when you're not out there. Even rocked the beanie during the broadcast out at OSF yesterday. <laughs> Trying to stay a little toasty in that very windy broadcast booth. I wonder if you could wear beanies instead of hats on the baseball field, if, uh, if that's permitted. Here's a double steal, breaking ball. Minzy chucks it down to second. It's a rocket, but just a bit late. And that is what Central Michigan has done in this series. They have done a great job stealing bases, and this time a double steal to put the Chippewas in business second and third with nobody out. Yeah, they definitely take their chances. They've done so all season long. They are now sitting at 26 for 32 on those attempts, and those double steal situations kind of puts the catcher in conflict just for a second. The throw to second base, though, just a little bit late. Good effort there by the Chippewas. Good base running. So the corner infielders are in right now. Casper Bauer and the first baseman, Alec Patino. Middle infielders are back. And here comes the 0-2 that zooms outside. One ball and two strikes to Christian Mitchell, who's two for seven in this series. Ohio leads 2-0. Series finale from Bob Wren Stadium. And a critical early conference showdown. This pitch is lined into left center field and down. Roush cuts it off. Two runs will score, and it's a two-run double from the nine spot. Christian Mitchell 
ties this game at two here in the top of the third. Your spoon right now is the chance to really catch up with your infield, catch up with your catcher right now and just take a breath. Uh, Chippewas, they are a very dangerous offensive team as we've seen all throughout the weekend. You will give up some runs to this team. How are you going to respond? Yeah, and we, we just look down the third base line and Ohio sending a, a handful of guys into the bullpen, not necessarily throwing just yet, but making their way down there. Such a great start for Trent Spoon. He retired the first six batters of the game. One thing Ohio did not do yesterday is give up the big inning. Right now, Spoon trying to avoid that. Top of the order. First pitch down for ball one to Marquise Jackson. Nearly popped behind Minzy. Yeah, Mitchell was almost halfway to third base there before having to go back. One ball and no strikes to Marquise Jackson, who struck out his first time up. You can tell just being able to get on the board like that, it's rejuvenated that Central Michigan dugout. Having everybody against the wall, slapping up against the fence as well too. You can feel their energy starting to flow now. Curveball slides outside. Two balls and no strikes. Yeah, everybody up on the top shelf there for a Central Michigan dugout. All tied at two. We expected this rubber match to be competitive down the stretch. 2-0 called strike. Two and one. Chippewas program that has been at the top of the league for the last several years. That's up and in. Jackson went around though. Two balls and two strikes. Yeah, every game against Central Michigan is always gonna be a challenge for the Bobcats year in and year out. This is a Chippewa team that made it to the Gainesville Super Regional and yep. gave Florida all they can handle. Florida, number 13 in the country last year. There goes Mitchell, no throw. That off-speed misses outside, three balls and two strikes. Since 2019, Central Michigan has two MAC regular season titles and two MAC tournament titles. One of those tournament titles came last season. 3-2 pitch outside, ball four. So runners at the corners with nobody out. Trent Spoon has to dig deep. Yeah, got into quite a bit of a jam here. And with the way that Central Michigan has been very ag aggressive on the base pass, watch out potentially for Jackson to potentially go. And Tim Brown will make his way out to the mound for a visit. Trent Spoon, what a start. He retired the first six batters, looked incredibly locked in. But it has not gone the way he planned it to here in the top of the third inning. Yeah, Simpson able to kind of get it started. We talked about Minzy and his switch hitting capabilities. Justin Simpson, uh, he also has those switch hitting capabilities and he was the first one really to figure out Spoon on the mound and then after that, it's kind of started a bonanza of sorts. Now two walks, a couple of hits for the Chippewas and they're in business. Yeah, that was one thing Ohio head coach Craig Moore said after the game yesterday, just too many walks. We had five walks, did Ohio, which, you know, when you th when you think about it, it's not a ton, but, you know, walks can really hurt you. Even that one walk can change the trajectory of an appearance for a pitcher. Breaking ball in the turf for ball one. Robbie Morgan, the fourth, redshirt sophomore, struck out his first time up. Yeah, and it was in three pitches during that at bat. Very effective from Spoon in that top of the first inning. Spoon keeping Marquise Jackson honest over at first base. 
Central Michigan stole three bases yesterday despite the 11 to seven loss. And that's a swing and a miss for strike two. Yeah, already at three stolen bases today. The Cats still looking for their first one of the entire series. Yep. Yeah, Ohio hasn't really pressed any buttons on the bases in this season, let alone the series. And that is a called strike, one and two. Count got changed. It looked like the scoreboard originally said two and two. Now it's one and two. Spoon deals outside. Now two balls and two strikes. Robbie Morgan, the fourth, Richard sophomore, 6'4", 225 from Groveport, Ohio. Jackson dancing over there at first base. He's got a massive lead, daring Spoon to throw over there. We tend to see that with Mac schools, with players being from Ohio. Even the uh, Michigan schools often come down to Ohio to do some recruiting. Likewise with some of the Ohio players being from Michigan themselves. That's way outside, and the count is full, three balls and two strikes. The rotation for Ohio has been consistent each of the last two weekends. Game one starter, Luke Olson. Game two starter, Mitchell Hemmond. Game three starter, Trent Spoon. That's the rotation, that was the rotation last weekend. It's the rotation this weekend with no Brendan Roeder for the second straight weekend. Spoon trying to get out of this jam. 3-2 high, and that is ball four. So the third walk of the inning from Trent Spoon. And the bases are loaded in a 2-2 contest. And the real issue is there, there's nobody out in the inning. It certainly is. This is something Coach Moore talked about. We'll come back to bite you, whether it's a leadoff walk or walks in either two out situations or nobody out situations. Those are the ones that especially sting. And it's all about just being able to find a way to get out of this jam without too much damage, or this can turn into a big inning for CMU. Jacob Donahue, the junior right fielder, will bat. He is four for eight in this series. And the off speed misses upstairs, one ball and no strikes. All of a sudden, that breaking ball, that fastball, that was locking the inside and outside corner for Spoon, not doing so in this third inning. And this is a very dangerous Jacob Donahue at the plate, who's hitting 356. That's tied for first on the team. That's a strike, one, one ball and one strike. They count with nobody out here in the top of the third. Curveball misses high, two balls and one strike. Christian Mitchell's at third. Marquise Jackson at second. Robbie Morgan the fourth at first. Corner infielders are in on the turf. 2-1 is knocked foul to the right side. Two balls and two strikes. The Bobcats lost seven straight to Central Michigan before yesterday. They snapped that seven game losing streak to the Chippewas. But to win a series, they're gonna have to do it today. Two, two down and in, three balls and two strikes. A big pitch this is coming up for Trent Spoon. Yeah, these have been some long at bats. Last couple have worked themselves into full counts. Here we go, another payoff. Spoon fires, and Donahue knocks it back. Three balls and two strikes with nobody out. The base is loaded. Trent Spoon has to find a way here. And again, fouled off. Heck of an at-bat from Donahue. The junior right fielder. And he 
can't talk about a better situation than this. Bases loaded, nobody out. Just anything that you send into the outfield is going to be a sack fly. Donahue having himself a great season. Coming off a brilliant weekend at Sacramento State. He was 7 of 12 at the plate. And here, hits this one in the air to right field. Sturrick, shy of the warning track, makes the catch. Mitchell tags and scores from third. Jackson moves to third. There are runners at first and second, pardon me, at third and first. And it's a 3-2 lead for Central Michigan here in the top of the third inning. So Robbie Morgan, the fourth, stays at first. And that is the first out of the inning on the sack fly from Jacob Donahue. And now here comes another chance here for Central Michigan to up the ante. And now that they have the lead for the first time, Navarra can really stick it to the Cats. Navarra bunts it up in the air. Here comes the runner at the plate. Minzy's tag is late. Jackson with some speed. He gets there just in the nick of time. And Central Michigan leads 4-2. to And everybody's safe. Robbie Morgan moves to second, and Garrett Navarra is at first base. And because that bunt was up in the air, I think that gave Jackson a lot of time to get down the baseline. All right, pitching change on the way for the Bobcats. Trent Spoon was Brilliant the first two innings, and then things took a turn for the worst in the top of the third as there are runners at first and second, and only one out. Central Michigan making some noise here in the top of the third inning. We'll have a pitching change, so we'll take a quick break and come back. You're watching Maction from Bob Wren Stadium on Bobcat TV. New pitcher on the mound for the Ohio Bobcats. As we resume action here from Bob Brent Stadium, Zach Weber takes over for Trent Spoon. Pickoff attempt, and look at this. Robbie Morgan is in a pickle. Casper Bauer applies the tag and a big out. What a job from Zach Weber. He comes off the bench, out of the bullpen, doesn't throw a strike, doesn't strike a guy out but he picks off Robbie Morgan the fourth. And what a way to start out of the pen for Weber. Yeah, you gotta have eyes on your back of your head as a pitcher and being able to come out there when you're probably already focused. Okay, I gotta make sure get a good first pitch. Good awareness by Weber. Luke Sefcik at the plate for Central Michigan. Zach Weber, 6'2", 210 from Lebanon, Ohio. Sophomore who has been pretty solid in his last couple of appearances. He threw an inning and two thirds scoreless baseball. Last time out against Bowling Green. As time is called, 
get a look there at Jordan Bischel, the Central Michigan coach, having a conversation with the home plate umpire. Coach Bischel took over the program in June of 2018, and his record prior to the 2023 season at Central Michigan, 143 and 57. An outstanding tenure with the Chippewas. Yep, four total titles as well, too, to add on to it. Two MAC regular season and two MAC tournament. That record, 143 and 57, gives Central Michigan a, seven, uh, a .715 win percentage. As that is a strike, one and two. That win percentage is the fifth best in the nation during that four year span behind Tennessee, Vanderbilt, UC, Santa Barbara, and Arkansas. And yeah, some big names up there. A couple of top 10 programs over there in the SEC. One, two is pulled on the ground towards short. Billy Adams fields the freshman, throws to first. And what a play by Patino to dig that one out. And that will retire the side. So Zach Weber comes out of the bullpen. He picks off Robbie Morgan, the fourth. And then he gets Luke Sefcik to ground out. So the damage limited, but Central Michigan puts up a four spot in the third. And an Ohio 2 nothing lead is turned into a two run Central Michigan lead. We go to the bottom of the third after this on Bobcat TV. Adams. Billy Adams leads off the bottom of the third inning as we welcome you back to Bob Wren Stadium alongside Cedric Ranger. I'm Sam Hyman, Ohio and Central Michigan. And there's our buddy Rufus kicking back and relaxing and enjoying the rubber match. He, lo he looks comfortable, right? Yeah, quite comfy <laughs> out there in the 30 degree weather. He's got to be the warmest of all of us. I heard those mascot suits are quite warm. I, uh, I can report that they are. I've been in a mascot suit before. Not that one. But <laughs> was this revealed? What? Was, was <laughs> wasn't in the job description years ago, but I, I volunteered one time. Mm -hmm. So, anyways, 2-0 and oh the count to Billy Adams, the only freshman in the starting lineup for the Bobcats. Two zero is... Lifted in the air to the right side and foul. Yeah, Billy Adams, I mean, when you're a freshman coming up to the D1 level, it's always a very difficult adjustment, but he's really made it easy. He did have some struggles kind of in practices and everything like that, but he's really gotten it going throughout his young season already, batting 326 on the year. Yeah, Craig Moore said he's a uh, He's a competitor. Billy Adams competes, doesn't let the opposition get to him mentally. On a four game hitting streak, hitting 326 this season. And you know, he's the only freshman in the starting lineup for a reason. He, he can flat out play. He was a big part of Ohio's double header sweep last weekend against Bowling Green. 2-2. Two -two. Zips outside, three balls and two strikes. And almost having his first home run in that Bowling Green series as well, if it wasn't for Archer skying up in the air to rob him. Nathan Archer, one of the best 
position players in the Mid-American Conference. Hailing from the Bowling Green baseball program. 3-2 is rocketed into right center field. And how about that? Billy Adams on a full count out of the nine spot turns the lineup card over for A.J. Roush. And that's just another example of the Bobcats hitters just being able to work in win these counts. Every single hit that they've gotten today, Sam, have been in two out situation or two strike situations. Really nice piece of hitting there from Billy Adams who extends his hitting streak to five games. And now A.J. Roush steps in, the redshirt sophomore center fielder who leads the Mac with eight doubles. And that is inside for ball one. A.J. Roush is Ohio homemade. He comes from a family of Bobcats. Parents, sisters, and some of his cousins all went to Ohio. They're very comfortable in this Athens setting. One ball and one strike, the count to A.J. Roush. And that misses. So the count is two balls and one strike. One of the things I asked A.J. a couple weeks ago about his high school career. He had a pretty darn good high school career at Olentangy Liberty. As we check over at first base and see Adams get back, I asked him, what did, what did you learn the most about your high school career? And, and AJ said, don't rush yourself. And he's a perfect example of a guy that waited his turn. His sophomore year, he came off the bench, part of a, a state championship run and accepted his role coming off the bench, being a pinch runner. Don't rush yourself. He, did, he said he did say he thought he was good enough to play varsity his freshman year, but he was on the JV team, so that sort of humbled him into a spot where he was forced to work and, and work behind the scenes by himself and get better. Here comes the 3-1, and A.J. skies this one in the air down the right field line and foul, full count. Yeah, for Roush, that's a really good opportunity to be able to have that experience where, hey, you're kind of lower on the depth chart, you're starting from the bottom, and you got to work your way up through hard work and effort. It's not just going to be given to you. And the same thing happens upon stepping foot on a college campus where during your freshman year you have guys who have worked three years, four years, so it's going to take a special work ethic to get there. Three balls and two strikes. Billy Adams at first. And A.J. watches that one zip outside, ball four. And the Bobcats in business in the bottom of the third inning with runners at first and second. Nobody out. Here comes Colin Kasperbauer. This is the, this is the top of the order here for, for Ohio. Dangerous part for Garrett Navarro, Navarra to be facing. And time is called. Yeah, the coaches know it too for Central Michigan as it's an opportunity to kind of get your wherewithal knowing what is coming and come up with a strategy if nobody out and two runners on, Central Michigan's going to have to step it up or the Cats will have a counterattack for them. Yeah, time is called. Jordan Bischel, head coach, is looks like he's going to keep Navarra out there on the mound. Coach Bischel. Prior to, we talked about his success at Central Michigan so far, 143 wins and 57 losses prior to the start of this season. He spent four seasons as a head coach at the Division II level, Northwood, a school in Midland, Michigan. It's always good to see some of those coaches that start at the D2, D3, junior college levels and work their way up to the D1 level. Beautiful bunt from Colin Kasperbauer, right back to the pitcher, Navarra, and that is as good a sacrifice bunt as you could ask for. Roush moves to second, Adams over to third for Mason Minzy, who homered his last time off. Exactly what you want in terms of being able to put yourself in position to drive some runners in. It's like an alley-oop in basketball, giving an opportunity for the next batter to dunk it. Let's see what Minzy got. 
Mason Minzy homered his last time up, like I just mentioned, to right center field. Turned over to the right side of the plate today, a switch hitter. Billy Adams at third, A.J. Roush at second. And Minzy cracks this one into center field. Brill back pedals, makes the catch. Adams tags up from third. So does Casper Bauer. He advances to third base. And there's a productive out from Mason Minzy. A sacrifice fly of the Bobcats crawling their way back. Just a one run game. It is make it two RBIs on the day for Mason Minzy. Uh, in those situations, having that guy on third, just anything into the outfield should get it done. And he was able to get it done there. Good piece of hitting for the Bobcats, even though it's back-to-back -back out. Those are about as productive of outs as you can ask for. Absolutely. Sack bunt, sack fly. And here's a ground ball that will almost scoot through. Sefstick dives, throws wide of the first base bag. And A.J. Roush scores. We are locked at four here in the third inning. Ohio and Central Michigan treating us to a dandy of a series finale. Don't you just love these Sunday series, Sam? Or you, every time you get to these last games, I mean, when we had the four game series, of course you'd have some insanely high scoring games with the fourth game, but it seems like that is still translated here on Sunday games in these three game series. We've already seen quite a bit of fireworks and we're still in the third inning. Alec Patino reaches he hit that ball very hard. It's going to go down as a single. Really tough play for Luke Sefcik. Thought for a moment that ball was going to sneak through into the outfield. Patino will take it, though. That misses upstairs on Will Sturick, who homered his last time up. Alec Patino just drove in his team leading 22nd batter, runner of the season. As Sturick takes strike. Garrett Navarra comes set and delivers. The 1-1 one -one misses badly. Two balls and one strike to Sturick. Well, no lead is safe in this series, that's for sure. Not at all, as you have seen tons of responses where it seems like all the time you have a team that goes on a little bit of a run and then you come back where a team tells you anything you can do, I can do better as the Cats. They practiced all throughout these past couple of weeks, situational hitting. They do like in-game scenarios where you might have a guy in scoring position and you need to come up with a big hit and you can see how that translates into games. Check over at first. Patino goes back. We said at the top, whichever pitching staff can limit the damage just by a, an eyelash over the opposition will likely win this game because both offenses just won't stop. Here's Will Sturrock. This one spins in the air to right center field and down. Patino goes first to third and the Bobcats booming with two outs once again here in the bottom of the third inning. Just when we saw the offense explode for the Chippewas, here it comes from the Bobcats. Starting to adjust and adapt more and more to what Navarra's throwing at him. Garrett Navarra, two-way player. There he is on the mound, 5'11", 210 from Sterling Heights, Michigan, making his 29th career start for the Chippewas has been rocky from the start. Gideon Antle whacks the first pitch foul to the right side. And the count is nothing and one. Ohio looking to win this series. Again, with the way that the, the format has changed in the Mid-American Conference from last year to this year where you've got three game series as opposed to four games you get nine times out of 10, somebody's winning the series as Antle hits this one into left field. Two out hitting, clutch for the Bobcats. 
as Antle slides in safely to second base and Ohio reclaims the lead here in the bottom of the third, five to four. Sam, this team just excels at being able to get those extra base hits. They just eclipsed 50 on the season in their last game and they have kept it going. Being able to go and turn what could be a potential single into two when you have the opportunity to, absolutely fantastic. And this may be the end of Navarro's day. Second and third, two outs. And that is going to be it, like you said, for Garrett Navarra. Jordan Bischel takes the baseball from him, and that will send us to a commercial break. 5-4 lead for the Bobcats after going down 4-2. In the top of the third inning, Ohio has responded so far three runs in the bottom of the third and two runners in scoring position for the Bobcats. When we come back, we'll tell you about the pitching change after this on Bobcat TV. The new pitcher on the mound for Central Michigan, Ryan Paul Blad, Southpaw who got the save. As we welcome you back to Bob Wren Stadium, another check on Rufus. He's hanging out, having fun, especially in this inning. Ohio's reclaimed the lead five to four. And first pitch strike, Cole Williams at the plate for the Bobcats. So Ryan Paul Blad. As we just outlined, he pitched two innings on Friday, got the save. He's got three saves on the season, but coming in very early in this game, probably because you know this is the series finale and you're, you're playing to win the game and you don't want to wait around before you use your better relievers. As that hits the outside corner, we're called strike one and two. This is a critical spot with Will Sturrock at third, Gideon Antle at second. Bobcats have done a lot of damage with two outs. Well, they do more. That misses down and in, ball two, two balls and two strikes. The 2-2 pitch is on the inside corner. It freezes Williams. Strike three called. But Ohio reclaims the lead, five to four. In the bottom of the third inning. We go to the fourth. What a game this has been. Ohio and Central Michigan in the series finale on a chilly 30 degree day in Athens. Back in a moment on Bobcat TV.
Nick Dardis leads off the top of the fourth inning as we welcome you back to Bob Wren Stadium alongside Cedric Granger. My name is Sam Hyman. Glad you're with us on Bobcat TV, a chilly one. 35 degrees here in Athens. Zach Weber back on the mound for the Bobcats. And the first pitch to Dardis is a strike, nothing in one. Well, Cedric, Ohio responds with three runs of their own in the bottom of the third inning to retake the lead five to four. This is the type of game where you got guys as this is hammered down the left field line and foul, wow, a screaming foul ball there from Dardis that had everybody holding their breath. Yeah, especially if you parked your car out there. <laughs> <laughs> did you? I did not. Okay, good. <laughs> just gonna say, I'd give you a sec. We'd have to pause the game. You go check your, your car go and see, check if car. see if it's okay. <laughs> oh, 2 waved at and missed for strike three as Dardis is retired. Anyways, this is the type of game, you know, you get to the series finale, you used a lot of pitchers. The offenses are, are, are cooking, things are, are going well. Every single pitcher that comes in for either team could potentially be the hero. That's how massive a, a situation this is where a lot of the arms are tired. Yeah, that's why teams aren't afraid to throw out their best guy, even if they've pitched in game one, for example, like with Palm Blatt of Central Michigan playing in his second game in this series, just knowing how pivotal it is for Chippewas. You want to start off on the right foot and really show like, hey, we're still the kings of this conference and defend your crown. As for the Cats, they can put the entire Mac on notice with a victory here. One ball and one strike to Justin Simpson, a graduate student playing shortstop today from Orange, California. That's a strike, one and two. Simpson led the nation in, led the nation with 20 sacrifice bunts last season. He does not have one this year. Had a really good season in 2022. Ranked second on the team with 15 steals. Had 54 walks a season ago. Tied for fourth in a single season in Central Michigan history. As that misses for ball three. Three balls and two strikes to Justin Simpson. This season, Simpson off to a slow start. He's hitting just 194, but he does draw a walk. That is his 14th walk of the season. And he is aboard for the second time today. And for Central Michigan, that's the 100th walk that they have forced this season. Real discipline at the plate. Next batter is Jake Brill, the junior center fielder who walked his last time up. Walks have really hurt Ohio in this game. Trent Spoon, the starter, walked three. And that was in one inning. As that fastball punishes the heart of the zone for a called strike. Nothing in one. Weber, quick snap throw to first. And Simpson dives back. If you're just joining us, Trent Spoon started this game for Ohio. He zipped through the first two innings easily. Six up, six down, no harm, no foul. And then took a turn for, a wor for the worst for Spoon in the third inning. Gave up four runs and walked three batters. But Ohio's offense? He's picked up the slack, leading this thing five to four. And that bunt attempt doesn't work. It's a called strike, one and two. Simpson's got a massive lead over at first and Weber chucks it over to check on. Justin Simpson. Simpson this season is three for three in stolen base attempts. He was 15 of 17 on the base pass last year. That's a massive lead once again. Yeah. Clearly Weber is, is 
locked in and making sure he doesn't get a good jump. Yeah, I like the way that he is really navigating things on the mound right now, just being able to keep these runners on us. We've already seen three stolen bases from the Chippewas, and I'm sure the coaches tell them we want to, that's enough of that. Here's a ground ball chop towards third. Casper Bauer throws to second and gets the force. Simpson out, and there are two down. So interesting there, you have a guy like Simpson who's fast. Clearly a hit and run was not on, and that allowed Casper Bauer to get the out. So Jake Brill advances to first on the fielder's choice, and Christian Mitchell will step in. He is the number nine hitter. Sophomore third baseman produced a two-run double his last time up. He watches that one settle on the outside corner for strike one. So both of these teams have grinded through the non-conference as this is lifted in the air. Shallow center, A.J. Roush airborne! And he snatches it out of thin air. Oh my goodness! Sam, I just stood up in my seat after that, and I think everybody in Bob Rin Stadium just put their hands in the air watching Roush go out to make that diving catch. It looked like Superman there all the way out there to make that catch. If you aren't warmed up now, I don't know what's going to get you warm because that was unbelievable. A.J. Roush, a big-time play in center in the Bobcats, Still lead it five to four going into the bottom of the fourth inning right after this on Bobcat TV. For the Bobcats, number 15, Alex Finney. All right, we welcome you back to Bob Wren Stadium. The blankets are out, the beanies are out. I'm sure the hot chocolate is is being consumed because look at those fans. They're, they're trying to stay warm. But Ohio fans enjoying themselves here at Bob Wren Stadium as we welcome you back to Athens, Ohio with Cedric Granger. I'm Sam Hyman, Alex Finney at the plate for Ohio. And just a moment ago, if you missed it, we are sorry. We're gonna probably get that out on uh, on social media and see see what what happens if it perhaps ends up on Sports Center. Not to you know, jump the gun or anything, but that was looking back on it, Cedric, a, f a fantastic play by AJ Roush in center field to end the top of the the fourth inning. And defensively, that's just having your pitchers back in that situation. If that goes down for a base hit, you never know what could happen. Central Michigan could really rally around a play like that. Potentially could have even had a runner get home as uh, Brill, of course, was at first base and maybe would have had a chance to go all the way home in that situation. So being able to retire the side with a catch like that could be one of the plays we look back at as a reason why a team won or lost the game. A Alex Finney strikes out to start the bottom of the fourth inning, and Billy Adams will come to the plate. Yeah, we, we were talking about you know the pitcher that makes the the right pitch or the pitcher that limits the damage will likely be the hero of this game. Heck, defensively, you make a play like that, especially with a runner on base, two outs. You know that's that is a, a winning play. If if this game is you know decided by one or two runs. We'll look back at that moment, because if that ball gets behind A.J. Roush, it is it's serious trouble for the Bobcats. One ball and one strike to the freshman shortstop, Billy Adams, who's one for one today and has hit safely in his last five games. He swings through that one for strike two. One ball and two strikes with one out 
here in the bottom of the fourth inning, Ohio leading five to four. Ryan Palmblad delivers, and that misses badly outside. Two balls and two strikes. Ohio, you know, the offense has been outstanding. Go back to yesterday. Nate Ross, one of the best relievers in the Mid-American Conference, gave up four hits and four runs when facing this Ohio offense. And that, that guy came into the game with a sub two ERA. Nate Ross is no joke, one of the best relievers in the MAC. And then Ryan Palmblad, who is one of the one of the closers on this team, three saves. He's been in a spot right now. Does get Adams to pop up and Sefcik makes the play for out number two here at the bottom of the fourth inning. Paul Blatt did do his job in, in the Friday game. So far, he's done his job here in this game. Three up, three down since coming in. Yeah, just like the weather where you'll have hot and cold days, it's the same thing for the pitchers. You'll have hot and cold days for Nate Ross. Just had a day that he will want to forget, but I'm sure he's going to continue being a top pitcher, top closer in the MAC. And for the Central Michigan team, you have two players that you can really depend on in in-game scenarios, and both Ross and Palmblad each having three saves on the year. And that is key to really find that guy in your staff that you can depend on in some of the primary games of these series, especially when you're trying to start off on that first day, trying to come out with a win, and then also your closing part of the series as well in game three. A 1-1 one, one misses down and in for ball two. Two balls and one strike. A.J. Rouch, here he is, the man of the hour. After a spectacular web gem in center field to end the top of the fourth inning. That one settles on the top shelf. Roush didn't think so. Count as two balls and two strikes. A.J. Roush, by the way, primarily played a, a corner outfield position last year, moved to center field this season as he waves and misses for strike three. And that is a quick one, two, three inning for Ryan Palmblad in the bottom of the fourth. We go to the fifth inning after this 5-4 lead for Ohio. And this series finale, Ohio took game two. Central Michigan won the opener. Something has to give here today on this fine Sunday in Athens. And we're back here at Bob Wren Stadium. Ohio uh, leads it five to four. A reminder, next up for the Bobcats will be a road game midweek against Moorhead State on Tuesday. And then Ohio will play its first MAC road series against Northern Illinois. And you can catch all the action on the Varsity app with Russ Eisenstein on the broadcast next weekend from DeKalb. A business to take care of today for the Ohio Bobcats, Cedric. And here's Zach Weber who Stays out there for another inning of work. Two balls and no strikes. And that misses inside. Ball three, three no to Marquise Jackson, who's doing everything he possibly can to stay warm. He's got the ski mask on covering his mouth. And that bounces in the turf for ball four. So a four pitch walk, not the way you want to start if you're Zach Weber. Nope, not at all. Lead off walk, just being able to get somebody on base, 
as well can really be the thing and a little bit of the uh, flint and steel, so to speak, to start the fire as we saw kind of polar opposite innings where offense dominated in the third and then it was all defense in the fourth. First pitch on the outside corner, strike one to Robbie Morgan, the fourth. Check over at first, and Jackson dives back safely. Yeah. yeah, for the Cats, just being able to have an opportunity to be in this series, to try to win two games against Central Michigan in this series for only the second time since 2009. It really goes to show how much the Chippewas have dominated in this series and how big of an opportunity it is for the Cats to have an opportunity to win it here on a Sunday. Here's a... Sky ball into right center field. It's carrying well with the wind, and that ball is gone. Robbie Morgan, the fourth, with his team leading fifth home run of the season, and Central Michigan has got the lead again, six to five. And there it is, Sam. Lead off walk coming to bite the Bobcats. That's the difference between this game being a tie ball game and it being a Chippewa lead. Hats off to the Maroon and Gold. Wow, what a moment for the Chippewas here in the fifth inning. As we talked about, no lead is safe. As a sweeping slider misses way outside, ball one to Jacob Donahue as Ohio's bullpen starts to get going. Misses upstairs, two balls and no strikes. Top of the fifth inning from Bob Bren Stadium series finale. And that one hits Donahue on the back. And the Chippewas dugout is incredibly energized right now. Not the way you want to start an inning at all. Garrett Navarra, who is removed from his pitching duties, is still batting in the four spot for Central Michigan. Check over at first. Donahue is back. Another throw over. Weber's been consistent with his pickoff attempts. And there goes the runner. It's a called strike. Minzy throws down the second, and it is not in time. Donahue steals a bag and puts himself in scoring position. That is four stolen bases now. As Weber, he was looking for the stolen base to happen, did multiple pickoff attempts there, and then the third time ended up being where he decided to go, and Donahue was able to get the second base. Another stolen base for this Chippewa squad. And Navarra now down on the count, nothing and two. Corner infielders are in. There are no outs as Weber tries to tighten the screws. The 0-2. Outside, one ball and two strikes. And with no pitch clock on the college level, it does allow for as many pickoff attempts as a pitcher wants. It's kind of different now from the minor league game, even Northwoods League, which is adding that as well too. And then of course, Major League. And Navarra screams this one in the air to right center field, that is down. Donahue will come around to score and the Chippewas extend their lead seven to five here in the fifth inning, still no outs. Now, if you're Navarra being able to go from being on the mound where a, the end of your day was not the best and being able to kind of make up for yeah. it a little bit with the bats, I know that's got to be a great feeling to yeah. know where, hey, I have a chance for a little redemption here. Yeah, short memory for sure after he had a rocky start and allowed five earned runs across two and two-thirds innings. Back-to-back -back singles for Garrett Navarra. He had a bunt single in the third. 
Now his second RBI as well. Luke Sefcik at the plate. Zach Weber again throws over to first. Weber confident with the pickoff attempts as we alluded to it. He came into this game in the third inning and picked off Robbie Morgan the fourth right away, sending a message. And now Tim Brown will make his way out to the mound. Has uh, set, uh, the pitcher Zach Weber has not thrown a pitch yet to Luke Sefcik. So we shall see if those pickoff attempts were perhaps buying the relievers down in the bullpen for Ohio some time. Or is this just a conversation to calm down Zach Weber? I think for the flow of the game and for the amount of arms that you have left in your staff, you want them to at least go a full inning just to be able to give more opportunities for only the few guys that you maybe have uh, do up to pitch today uh, to be able to kind of space it out and make sure that you're just eating at least one inning while you're in there. And for all intents and purposes, not too bad of a time out there, especially coming in and which was a bit of a jam that Spoon kind of created in the third inning and being able to work his way out of that. But it appears it will be the end of his day. Yep, it will be the end of the road for Zach Weber. So we will take a quick break for a pitching change. And Ohio now will look to regroup. There are three runs already to come across for Central Michigan in the top of the fifth inning and still nobody out. Seven to five lead for Central Michigan as we will resume the top of the fifth inning after this on Bobcat TV. New pitcher for the Bobcats, Hudson Bonkel, the sophomore from Corona, California, 6'3", 205 pounds out of Centennial High School. Bonkel takes over for Zach Weber. You know, look at Zach, uh, pardon me, Hudson, who's pitching from the stretch here with a runner on first and nobody out. First pitch, fly ball into shallow right field. Will Sturrock, cap falls off, and he makes the catch for the first out, so very productive work there from Hudson Bonkle, who makes his fifth appearance of the season. Hudson is sporting a six flat ERA in four appearances. Six innings, five strikeouts, uh, pardon me, 10 strikeouts, five walks, and six innings of work. That hits the bottom part of the zone for a called strike. Nothing one to Nick Dardis. Craig Moore, the head coach of Ohio, told us at the beginning of the season that Hudson has a very good breaking ball and his fastball heats up in the low to mid 90s. 91 to 94 miles per hour. 
on that fastball. The 1-1. One, one. And this is ripped on a line into left center field. Long run for Gideon Antle. He can't get there. Navarra rounds third. Here's the throw from Billy Adams, and it's late. An RBI double from Nick Dardis, the catcher. And Central Michigan has erupted here in the fifth inning with four runs, eight to five Chippewas. Look at the dugout. Yeah, they <laughs> have a fire right now. Why not? Now they have two innings in which they have scored four runs. Kind of been Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde a little bit for this Central Michigan group from inning to inning as it's either been a shutout or it's been one of those big innings. First pitch is down and in ball one to Justin Simpson. Still kind of crazy that Ohio is out hitting Central Michigan in the game, six to five. But the Chippewas lead eight to five on the scoreboard. That fastball punishes the heart of the zone, a one and one. Series finale from Bob Wren Stadium, Central Michigan and Ohio. Fastball misses badly, two balls and one strike. See how Hudson reacts as well to the potential stolen base attempt from these base runners of Central Michigan. We saw Weber look back a lot and do a lot of pickoff attempts. We'll see how Hudson deals with it. Hudson deals. Dart has slipped over there at second base. But there was no pickoff attempt. Three balls and one strike to Justin Simpson, who has reached on a walk and a single today. And the 3 1 is tapped foul, first base side. Count is full, three balls and two strikes. Bonkle comes set, looks over at second and delivers a curveball. Whacked on the ground towards Alec Patino at first. He dashes to the cushion for out number two. Dardis moves to third. And that'll bring up Jake Brill. One thing that Central Michigan has done a really good job of is putting the ball in play today, Cedric. They've only struck out three times in this game. Compare that to the first two games of this series. Chippewas struck out 24 times in the first two games of this series. Only three strikeouts today. Yeah, they've just been seeing the ball very well. Um, at the beginning, they had a little bit of a slow start kind of out of the gates, but ever since the third inning, they have hit the ground running and even loud outs in situations where the bases are loaded, which with the way they've been consistently getting players on base, whether through walks, hit by pitches, or being able to get swings um, they have really been able to take advantage of some of those loud outs to turn into sacrifice flies, as well as just keeping the outfielders on their toes. One of misses low, two balls and no strikes. Yeah, you mentioned that first inning. Two of the strikeouts came in the first inning for Central Michigan, and they, they've only struck out once since. So it's been quite the productive day at the plate for the Chippewas. This is grounded sharply towards third. Casper Bauer knocks it down, uses that chest, and he retires Jake Brill to end the inning. But not before Central Michigan puts up a four spot in the fifth inning. Central Michigan leads eight to five over Ohio as we go to the bottom of the fifth after this series finale continues from Bob Wren Stadium on Bobcat TV.
two, three, and four do up for Ohio as we uh, resume action here, bottom of the fifth inning with Cedric Granger, I'm Sam Hyman. The Bobcats trail the Chippewas eight to five after a four run fifth inning from Central Michigan. Colin Kasperbauer, Mason Minzie, Alec Patino scheduled here in the home half of the fifth. Ryan Palmblad continues to work for the Chippewas. Sweet. Just noticed some wind starting to pick up here in Athens. No surprise, but we're just giving you the information. It is really whipping on the right side of the field and bleachers. Two balls and no strikes. Fastball hits the top shelf, three and one. Casper Bauer, a sack bunt his last time up. He flew out in the first inning. Fifth year senior. Takes low for ball four. Junior college transfer as well from Iowa Western. And now up for Ohio. Mason Minzy will Mason come to the plate. One thing that Colin Casper Bauer said at the beginning of the season. You know, moving from Iowa Western to Athens, Ohio, making that transition a couple of years ago. He said, I'm okay, I, I've learned that I'm okay on my own. He was, he, he is now much further away from his family, 14 hours from Athens to Sioux City, Iowa, where he grew up. Feels at home, this is a second home for him. As Minzy takes for a called strike, one and one. Mitch, just to see how Ohio will respond. I mean, the last time they gave up four to Central Michigan, the Bats were able to have the back of the pitching staff being able to put up three of their own to retake the lead. And now they find themselves down by their biggest deficit of the day. The score actually matching the score from game one right now, and we're not even halfway through the game. Um, we'll see what the Cats have. With their bats, the offense is a strength, and they will need a lot of runs. Mason Minzy has two RBIs in this game, a sack fly and a homer. And he chops this one slowly third base side. Mitchell charges in, throws to first, it's short, and everybody's safe. So Minzy is aboard. There are runners at first and second with nobody out, and here comes the team's leader in RBIs, Alec Patino. Now a left-on-left -left matchup as Patino, who really likes to hit at this park, had two homers last weekend in the same game against Bowling Green. We were there for that. And uh, now he's got an opportunity to do some more damage here in the bottom of the fifth. That's up and in for a ball. Yeah, both of those home runs, of course, over the right field wall made a really great impression to all the Bobcats fans getting to see him for the first time at home. But with the way that the wind has picked up, even though center field has been the hot spot for home runs, could see one that may go over right field. Oh, yeah. That's exactly where Cole Williams hit the, the two he had yesterday over the fence. Two balls and no strikes. Oh, here's a bunt attempt. And Patino pulls it back. It is a called strike, two and one. Casper Bauer at second, Minzy at first. And pardon the count's actually three balls and one strike. So here's the pitch. And that is downstairs, ball four. So the bases are loaded. For the Ohio Bobcats here in the bottom of the fifth inning, and that'll bring up Will Sturrock, who has already homered in this game. Ryan Palmblad, who pitched a 1-2-3 fourth inning and actually retired the first four batters he faced coming out of the bullpen, has not been the same here in the fifth inning. 
and we've kind of seen that with a lot of the pitchers today where we've seen some really good starts and then now once it gets past one inning things kind of start to deteriorate a little bit that's why you kind of see these high scoring games at the end of series constantly as teams just try to get through these games with as many arms as they can still muster without having to feel that fatigue after the visit by the entire central michigan infield and catcher nick dartis we resume action bases loaded First pitch is downstairs for a ball. 1-0 and oh to Will Sturrock. He's two for two today, a single and a homer. 1-0 oh is down and in, ball two. Got to be really careful here if you're Ryan Palmblad. Southpaw. He's got three saves this season. One of them came on Friday in the series opener. 2-0 is a called strike. It's got to feel good for him after throwing a couple pitches uh, that have been off the mark just to be able to get back and find that strike zone again is huge. 2-1 pitch. Swung on and missed for strike two. Great bounce back in this A-B for Ryan Palmblatt. The 2-2 offering. And Sturrock checks his swing. He went around. Strike three. What a response from Ryan Palmblad. And a big first out here in the bottom of the fifth inning. As Gideon Antle comes to the plate. Ohio left two runners on. And both were in scoring position the last uh, two innings ago in the third frame. You've got a golden opportunity here. Gideon Antle. Whiffs through the first offering, nothing in one. Situational hitting coming back into play for the Cats. This is an opportunity you cannot squander. And Antle waves and misses. He's out in front of that pitch, nothing in two. O2 pitch, wave and a miss. The ball squirts behind Dardis, and Kasperbauer sprints in and scores. Heads up play from Colin Kasperbauer. And Ohio is within two. Runners move up as well. Minzy to third, Patina to second. So back to back strikeouts from the Bobcats in the batter's box, but they do get a critical run. And now Cole Williams with an opportunity. Two runners in scoring position with two down. Looks like they have not adjusted the score. Yeah, they haven't, which is interesting. That one bounces and nicely blocked by Nick Dardis. They have adjusted it on our live stats. Score is eight to six. Here comes the 2-0. Settles outside, three balls and no strikes. Cole Williams, a quiet day thus far. 0 for two after five RBIs and two homers yesterday. 3-0, that sticks to the inside corner, strike one. think Williams would get something in his wheelhouse on this pitch. And time called. Cole Williams called time and he was granted it. A little bit of time to think here. This is a situation where the Bobcats, it's one of those times where it's a swing moment in the game. It certainly is. And Ohio has been really good in this position today, four for eight at the plate with two outs. As opposed to Central Michigan, 0 for five at the plate with two outs. Oh, 
three balls and one strike to Cole Williams. Here we go. And that's low, ball four. So Ryan Palmblad has walked three batters in this inning. Been a roller coaster a little bit. <laughs> really has. got a couple of strikeouts, but also a trio of walks and one hit given up. Now the question is, if he can pick up an out here, it won't even be too bad. Looking back on his score sheet, Alex Finney swings and misses at the first pitch, strike one. Well, how about this? Ryan Palmblad came into this game with a 2.50 ERA. In 18 innings, he had only walked three batters, and he's walked three in this inning. But it might not come back to bite him as that backdoor curve hits the outer corner for strike two. O2 is lifted in the air, shallow right field, and playable for Jacob Donahue, and he will make the catch to retire the side. So Ohio gets a run on a wild pitch, but they strand the bases loaded as Ryan Palmblad gets out of the jam. We go to the sixth after this. More, more baseball action coming your way on Bobcat TV. Top of the sixth inning we go here at Bob Wren Stadium. Alongside Cedric Granger, I'm Sam Hyman. Glad to have you with us here on Bobcat TV. Hudson Bonkel remains out there on the mound for the Bobcats, and it'll be 9-1-2 due up for Central Michigan. First pitch fastball is in there for a called strike to Christian Mitchell, the sophomore third baseman who had a two-run double back in the third inning. Another curve. That offsets the fastball from Bonkle. Great mix of pitches. That, that's that breaking ball that Craig Moore told us at the beginning of the season is very, very good. What a bounce back though. Christian Mitchell laces it up the middle into center field and that's a leadoff single for the sophomore third baseman. He went low and Mitchell got it and put it into center field. Yeah, well, that's some really good adjustment with that at bat with, again, having two strikes already there, kind of a risky swing there, but he saw a pitch that he liked nice and low, able to get his bat down and almost kind of scooping up yeah. and was able to make it work. Back to the top of the order, Marquise Jackson has walked twice and scored both times. Pitch misses down and in for a ball, one and one. Central Michigan took the first game of this series, eight to five. Ohio responded yesterday, 11 to seven. Bobcats sitting three and two in MAC play. Check over at first, and Mitchell is back. Central Michigan, as you mentioned earlier, opening up MAC play this weekend. The one team that did not play MAC series last weekend 
sitting at one and one. And time is called as Jordan Bischel, the head coach for Central Michigan, speaking to two of our umpires. Appears to be frustrated a little bit at something, not quite sure what. Anywho, we will resume action here with the count, one ball and one strike with nobody out in the top of the sixth inning. As that fastball hits the outside corner, strike two. Mitchell with a big lead at first, and this is hammered out into center. That sends A.J. Roush back, and Roush tracks it down for out number one. He's been playing a heck of a center field today. He's had to. There's been a lot of pat or a lot of uh, pitches that have been sent out into play, especially around that center field, and he's really had to go and track some things on. I talked about earlier keeping the outfield on their toes. In the case of A.J. Roush, he's had to be off his toes a little bit to go <laughs> and make some of those diving catches. Uh, but good work by him so far today. He's had to been perfect. Robbie Morgan, the fourth, stands in. Another throw over to first. Mitchell is back. Robbie Morgan, the fourth, homered. His last time up. Breaking ball, whips outside. 1-0. and oh. One thing I've noticed about the Cats this year and some of their series where they've gotten to play uh, four games, whether it's been on the road or even the three games, they have finished very strong, three and one in these situations. And this is looped down the left field line, a fair ball. Morgan the fourth rounds first and thought about taking second, now he does. And Ohio in some trouble now as Central Michigan puts runners at second and third with one out. Good piece of hitting. Now Central Michigan has finally caught up to Ohio in terms of yep. hitting. Some of those walks earlier in the game led to a couple of extra bonus runs for this Chippewas team, but they're really starting to see the ball well. Sixth inning only, still a lot of time left to go in this game, but it's still like we have seen a variety of different chapters. Oh, yeah. That's a good way to put it. Uh, this, is, uh, this is chapter six. We're in the sixth mm -hmm. inning of our series finale. We'll have to come up with a title and a subtitle at exactly. some point. <laughs> <laughs> Jacob Donahue at the plate for Central Michigan. The entire infield is in. Ohio cannot afford to let any other runs come across in this game. Not at all, especially in this trilogy. It's Kind of interesting how whenever you have these three game sets, when you, especially when you split the first two games of the series, you end up having a game that almost is like a narrative that goes throughout three games, one narrative yeah. about the whole weekend. And it's interesting to kind of see what's gonna be the theme. What will be the theme of the weekend? Will it be the Cats resilience or will it be the Chippewas continuing to be that team to be in the MAC? And a massive pitch on the horizon here for Hudson Bonkle. Two balls and two strikes with one out. On a chilly Sunday in Athens, second and third with one down. And the fastball just misses. Hudson thought that that was it. He thought strike three was, was right there, but no dice. And Jacob Donahue lives pitch, another pitch. Three balls and two strikes. The pitch chopped foul. Ohio set the tone early with two solo homers. Mason Minzy, Will Sturrock, but two four run innings for Central Michigan. That's why the Chippewas are in front, eight six. Here's the payoff. Breaking ball just misses the top of the strike zone. And that's ball four. So the bases are loaded with one out for Garrett Navarra. That is 
tough. There's always that, that close pitch, bang, bang call, and it doesn't go Ohio's way. Yeah, it's a 50-50, and sometimes, as much as people hate to say it, baseball can be a game about luck sometimes, and that's one of those times where a good break there would have gotten you a strikeout, bad break. Now you're in a jam once again. Garrett Navarro, one of the most experienced players on the Central Michigan roster, 128 career starts as a position player. One ball and one strike to count to Navarra, who has singled twice, one bunt single and one single into the outfield. Bonka with that nasty breaking ball. This is zapped in the air to shallow center field. A.J. Roush went back, had to recover, makes the catch. Another RBI for Garrett Navarra, this time a sacrifice fly. And Central Michigan increases its lead nine to six. There are two down here in the sixth inning. Luke Sefcik will trot to the plate. Redshirt freshman second baseman 0 for 3. Hudson Bonkel delivers, and he's really working that curveball in this in this inning. It is, it's nasty. It's got a great arc to it. The 1-0, and the fastball zips upstairs for ball two. Two balls and no strikes to Luke Sefcik. Bonkel looks over at second and delivers. 2-0 is fouled off to the right side. Two balls and one strike. Central Michigan is doing this again without one of their best position players, Danny Westenfeld, who is out with an injury. Westenfeld has been a, a major part of Central Michigan's success over the years. Here's the 2-1. And this is lined back up the box. Clutch hitting from Luke Sefcik is first of the game. And Morgan the fourth rounds third and scores. Two out hitting for Central Michigan. And it's actually the first time in this game Central Michigan has a base hit with two outs. And now it's 10-6. Yeah, just when we were mentioning how good the Cats were, in that sort of situation. Yep. Here comes the Chippewas. They must have heard you when you said 0 for 5. Said, watch this, Sam, watch this. <laughs> I didn't know my voice carries in, <laughs> into the, the Central Michigan dugout. Nonetheless, to your point, finding a way with two outs. Good piece of hitting from Luke Sefcik. Nick Dardis at the plate. One for three with an RBI double. Bonkle deals. And the 0-1 misses outside. One ball and one strike. In the next half inning, we'll have a scoreboard update around the Mid-American Conference. Cedric will give you the, the breakdown on that. Kent State is, you know, they're, they are rocking and rolling if you're paying attention to the league. That misses low, two balls and one strike. Kent State is 14 and four coming into today, three and zero in the MAC. They've won 12 straight games. Stay tuned for a MAC scoreboard update on the other side. The two one, and a fastball is clobbered in the air to left. Gideon Antle waits patiently and he'll make the catch to retire the side, but. Central Michigan tacks on two more runs, 10 to six. The Chippewas, the defending MAC tournament champions, looking to win this series. Right now, it's looking good. 
for the team from Mount Pleasant. We'll be back on Bobcat TV. Yep, there it is. Billy Adams. And we are back here at Bob Rand Stadium for the bottom of the sixth inning. Billy Adams leads off for Ohio. And back for Cedric Ranger, I'm Sam Hyman. Adams takes a called strike, nothing in one. As Cedric, we look around the Mid-American Conference and some other games going on. What's, what's catching your eye? I know one score that's caught my eye. Yeah, things are getting interesting with that Ball State and Toledo matchup. They have a doubleheader today. First of all, the Cardinals, they crushed the Rockets 14-2 on Friday and have an opportunity to try to defend home turf in Muncie. And they're down 16-10 live right now in the ninth inning. Pretty great game going on there with a lot of scoring. Nothing new if you've been a fan of Mac, basket, <laughs> Mac baseball for quite a while. Also, some other things to note. Kent State, they swept Canisius on their Friday doubleheader, 17-4 and 21-3. I mean, talk about a team that is on fire right now, Sam. 12 straight wins. They did not make the MAC tournament last year, and they have an opportunity to do so this year if they keep their play up like that. Other scores going on right now, baseball, Bowling Green and Akron. Bowling Green won the first couple of that series, and Akron up 3-2. Yeah, that game going on right now, that, that last score that you mentioned, 3-2 to two in the fifth inning, the Zips lead the Bowling Green Falcons. But Yeah, correction, Akron won the first two of that doubleheader. Gotcha. Well, yeah, Kent State still has to play one more game this weekend. Actually, tomorrow they're not playing their final game of the series against Canisius today as Billy Adams charges this one in the air to right field and playable for Jacob Donahue. So that is out number one in the bottom of the sixth. Actually, the next max series for Central Michigan will be interesting. Chippewas host Kent State next weekend for a three-game set. That's after Kent State has a midweek against Pittsburgh on the road. So it should be an interesting series for the Golden Flashes and the Chippewas. Meanwhile, Ohio will play that midweek game against Moorhead State on Tuesday and then they'll play at Northern Illinois as A.J. Roush swings and misses for strike two. Russ Eisenstein will be on the call for that. First road series will have a, a broadcast for you. And you can catch all the action on the Varsity app. It's been a tough go for Northern Illinois this season, winless in MAC play. What? Yeah, they're playing Miami and Oxford this weekend. Had a doubleheader on Friday. It was NIU falling 10 to three and 16 to three consecutively. AJ Roush waves and misses for strike three and all of a sudden Ohio has gone a little cold here in the middle innings. They have only one hit in the last two and two thirds innings. Colin Casper Bauer comes to the plate. A 
walk, a sack bunt, and a fly out for Casper Bauer today. That's low for ball one. Well, you can give a lot of credit, Cedric, to Ryan Palmblad, who as a reliever has been fantastic today. Yeah, I've counted six strikeouts here as being able to have a nice response after picking up a couple of walks, having the same amount of walks as he did throughout the entire season, being able to be a little bit of bend but not break. And then right now he has been lights out in this inning. It seems like the Cats have got to find their offense again after they had it early. It's now gone ice cold. And misses outside. And the count is three and one. Ryan Palmblad's longest outing of the season was on March 5th. And that is low for ball four. Casper Bauer just making sure that that was the official call and it's a two out walk. Ryan Palmblad went four shutout innings, struck out four batters on March 5th, his longest outing of the season. That was against St. Mary's, the Gales. What a wild start to the season for the Chippewas playing at Baylor, at UT Rio Grande Valley, at St. Mary's, at Sacramento State, at San Jose State. I mean, it, it's been a California, Texas, va not vacation, business trip. Yeah, and they were really successful over that. They went four and four in Texas and then five and two in their California road trip as well so they were going over there and like you said business trip <laughs> but i'm sure they enjoyed the warm weather a little bit most most definitely here's mason minzy who grounds this towards third mitchell deep in the hole chucks it to first in time and that retires aside so a fist pump from ryan palmblad and the inning is over so central michigan still leads Score 10-6 as we head to the top of the seventh inning when we come back on Bobcat TV. To the top of the seventh we go from Bob Brand Stadium. Central Michigan leads Ohio by a score of 10 to six. Back with Cedric Ranger, I'm Sam Hyman. Thanks for being with us on this chilly Sunday in Athens, Ohio. New pitcher on the mound for Ohio. It's the Southpaw, Murray State transfer, Dylan Masters, who fires a first pitch fastball in there for strike one, Masters 6'3", 210, sophomore from New Albany, Ohio. And he will make his sixth appearance of the season out of the bullpen. He appeared earlier in this series and threw two thirds of an inning with a strikeout on Friday. And New Albany, one of the top high schools for baseball in the Columbus area, also my hometown. So I was, I was gonna, gonna give a shout out 
to New Albany, uh, but they've been very competitive, have sent a lot of players to play at the next level in college, have a couple of pitchers. Uh, one plays at Purdue, Fort Wayne. Uh, they've had a couple of players go and play some SEC baseball at Auburn as well. What do you make of the, the New Albany area, just in general? I, should I pay a visit? Yes, you should. It's absolutely gorgeous up there. Uh, again, if you like nice column architecture, some white picket fences, they do have a good bit of that up all there right. in New Albany. All right, all right. Breaking ball, and Simpson did not go around. So Justin Simpson continues to battle here with two strikes. Two and two the count to Central Michigan's number seven hitter. And that misses way outside, so full count. Dylan Masters is the fourth pitcher used today for the Bobcats, and here is a skyscraper. Behind the second base back, Billy Adams reaches up and makes the catch for out number one in the top of the seventh inning. That would have been a lot harder to catch yesterday. We had wind gusts of 15, 20 miles an hour. There were flurries all over the place. It was, it was wild, and uh, that a little bit easier today for Billy Adams. Yeah, but the sun did peak out a little bit. It hasn't been very sunny throughout this day, mostly clouds. Sometimes the sun can get in your eye when trying to go and make that catch, so way to track it by Adams. Adams rocking the eye black as well to shade the sun. Jake Brill at the plate, junior center fielder. Walked, reached on a fielder's choice, and grounded out today. One ball and one strike to Jake Brill, his first start of the series. And now it's one and two as Masters looks to rear back here and respond. And that changeup misses outside. Two balls and two strikes. Hudson Bonkel's final line, two innings, four hits, two runs, both earned. One walk, no strikeouts. That one is zapped foul to the right side. Count remains two balls and two strikes to Jake Brill. Two two pitch is lifted in the air to shallow right field. Will Sturrock waits, waits, and right, makes right, the catch. Two up, two down in the top of the seventh inning. Yeah, Masters already pitched the same amount of time that he had in game number one, where he pitched two third of an inning, and now he's already got up to that. Gave up no runs and had a strikeout in that time, and right now been very effective so far. Ohio potentially can put together a clean sheet for the first time in a while. Yes. The first two innings, Central Michigan was retired in order. Christian Mitchell behind in the count, nothing and one. Masters fires, yes. and another yes. fastball in there for strike two. Are your pitch here, D? Oh, Murray State transfer, Dylan Masters. Looking sharp, 0-2, oh, ring him up, strike three. And the Ohio fans love it as Dylan Masters works a spotless top of the seventh inning. And now it's time to stretch. Ohio still with time. They trail 10-6, but the bats need to start, start rolling here as we get to the later stages of this game. Back in a moment on Bobcat TV.
Davis for Central Michigan, number 16, Michael Conti. And to the bottom of the seventh we go from Bob Brand Stadium. New pitcher on the mound for the Central Michigan Chippewas. It's the right-hander Michael Conti from Cincinnati, Ohio. He will take the place of Ryan Palmblad, who pitched an impressive three and a third innings. First pitch is a called strike to Alec Patino, nothing in one. Three and a third innings for Ryan Palmblad, just one hit allowed, one run. The only issue was the control. He walked four batters, and he struck out six. New pitcher is, like we mentioned, Michael Conti from Cincinnati, Ohio. He makes his sixth appearance of the season. It's been a rocky start so far out of the bullpen for the righty. As Patino drills this on the ground towards short, tough play. Simpson behind the second base bag, and he throws a rocket over there for out number one. What a play there by Simpson. Being able to, again, another time when we're seeing the defense just having a pitcher's back. And that is something that is just as important as the pitchers being able to pick up their strikeouts or be able to force a couple of pop flies is having the defense make a play for you. And we saw that right there. A crucial out to start in innings. Yeah, especially when you have a team like Ohio that's trying to come from behind. Is that first pitch fastball hits the outside corner for strike one. Michael Conti making his fifth appearance, like I mentioned, nine innings of work, six strikeouts, seven walks. So the control has been a bit shaky so far this season. He's 6'3", 205 pounds out of Walnut Hills High School in Cincinnati. 1-1 one, one is blasted up in the air, but playable. Shallow center field, Jake Brill will make the catch, and there are two away. Well, it's been kind of interesting. Ohio's offense erupted early with a homer in the first, homer in the second, and then three runs on four hits in the third. And since then, Cedric, only one hit since the, the third inning. Yeah, and you've got to credit not only Central Michigan's defense, but Palm Blatt as well. Pop up into shallow right center field. Gideon Antle took the first pitch and unable to get anything out of it. So we head to the top of the eighth inning when we come back. A one, two, three, flawless inning out of the pen from Michael Conti. Ohio and Central Michigan closing in on the finale of this one. It's 10-6 Chippewas. We'll be back on Bobcat TV. Top of the order for Central Michigan as we start the top of the eighth inning. Back with Cedric Granger, I'm Sam Hyman. Thanks for being with us on Bobcat TV. Marquise Jackson, the junior from Chi-Town, Chicago, will step into the lefty batter's box. He is 0 for 2 today with two walks and two runs scored, and he watches the first pitch from Dylan Masters connect on the outside corner for strike one. Marquise Jackson in his first season with Central Michigan. He transferred from McLennan Community College in Waco, Texas, where he helped McLennan to the Junior College World Series. One ball and two strikes to Marquise Jackson. Yeah, it must have been cool for him getting to return back to Waco. Yep. Here's a skyscraper. First base side foul ground. Alec Patino yeah. navigates. 
makes the play for out number one. Yeah, you're right. Uh, Marquise Jackson in Central Michigan got to open up the season against the Baylor Bears. Not McLennan, but McLennan is in Waco. So same territory and familiar territory for Marquise Jackson. Robbie Morgan the fourth takes a strike, nothing and one. He's been busy. A walk, a homer, and a single. And that just misses outside. One ball and one strike. Dylan Masters fires and Robbie Morgan the fourth shoots this one down the left field line and that is foul. Ten six lead for Central Michigan here in the top of the eighth inning. And the fastball rises high. Two balls and two strikes. Two two and Morgan the fourth knocks it foul to the right side. Pitch. pitch. Called strike three. Dylan Masters, his second strikeout, and he's retired the first five batters he's faced since coming out of the bullpen. It's got to be refreshing for the Bobcats here. If they want to have any chance to win this game, they're going to have to keep Central Michigan at 10 runs in this game. And another strikeout looking for Dylan Masters. He's been on fire so far. First pitch is in there for a strike to Jacob Donahue. Nothing and one the count. Masters delivers and this is crushed foul down the right field line. And although Donahue doesn't have a hit today, he's had a very productive day as an RBI on a sack fly, a hit by pitch and a walk. So being able to contribute Feels like, yeah, this this Central Michigan offense really hasn't missed a beat from last season where they lost a couple of guys who got drafted yes. as that misses oh. just outside. Jacob Marcy was taken in the sixth round last year by the San Diego Padres and that's obviously yeah, quite yeah, impressive. Yeah. What's also impresses, impressive is Dylan Masters. Called strike three as he rings up Jacob Donahue. And that is six up, six down out of the pen for the Murray State transfer. Can the Bobcats get something going offensively? They have just one hit over their last four innings. We go to the bottom of the eighth after this on Bobcat TV.
for the Bobcats, number eight, Cole Williams. Cole Williams leads off the bottom of the eighth inning as we welcome you back to Bob Wren Stadium. Ohio has just one hit in the last four innings. The Ohio fans trying to charge up their squad and mount a comeback, a four-run lead for the Chippewas as Michael Conti burns a fastball in the inside corner for strike one. And Cole Williams is 0 for 2 today with a walk. He, he was the guy at the dish yesterday that really sparked this offense with two homers, not yet today as he's down in the count, nothing in two. That fastball misses outside, one ball and two strikes. Here's the pitch, and Williams shoots this on the ground towards short, and Simpson bobbles it, no play, and Ohio has a base runner. Sometimes that's all it takes to really get the starter rally moving as the crowd really trying to help energize the Bobcats and being able to come out with your leadoff player getting on base. That is huge for the Cats. Let's see if that can be the first domino, and can the Cats continue to get those hits to fall. That is the first error of the game. Alex Finney, senior second baseman, steps in looking for his first hit, and he charges this one, and it pings off of Simpson's mitt into left center. Everybody's safe. First and second with nobody out for the Bobcats. That was a hard hit ball. We'll see what the official scoring of that play is. I think it was a, a much tougher play that go around than the first ground ball to Justin Simpson. Yeah, I'm pretty confident they may call this one a hit, yeah. just given where that was. It will indeed be a base hit for Alex Finney, and now Billy Adams comes to the plate. And now time is called. Cole Williams doing some practice jogs here. He slid into second pretty hard. All right, Billy Adams, he's one for three. Ohio has runners at first and second with nobody out. It's a four run lead for Central Michigan. The defending MAC tournament champions. Ohio trying to win this series, come back and win this series. After dropping the opener, Chippewas looking to slam that door shut and lock it. That is just on the outside corner, strike two to Billy Adams. Are you kidding me? Michael Conti, who's been a little rocky this season out of the bullpen, comes in with an eight ERA. Has been impressive today, and he locks up Billy Adams on the outside corner, called strike three. Heck of a pitch from Conti. And now A.J. Roush will step in. They've just been three of the best pitches he's thrown all season that time around. Especially in an 0-2 situation, you might throw something a little outside to get Adams to potentially chase after it, but that one right down line for the strike. There's a slider right down the middle for a called strike to A.J. Roush, who is 0 for 3 today with a walk. Team's leader in doubles with Eight, that leads the Mac as well. And that's strike two. Cole Williams at second, Alex Finney at first. Prime time opportunity for the Bobcats. And Roush well tardy on the fastball upstairs, strike three. So two down in the bottom of the eighth inning. Michael Conti has responded after the two first two hitters reached. Now it's up to Colin Kasperbauer. Go, 
Casper Bauer has walked twice in this game. He takes inside for a ball. 1-0. Ohio is 4 for 11 in the game with two outs. That's a 364 average. 1-0 is hit high in the air, foul, and into the Ohio bullpen. One ball and one strike. Central Michigan making some defensive adjustments in terms of alignment as this is grounded right back to the pitcher, Conti. Easy work as he flips it over to first to retire the side. So Central Michigan a little rocky to start the bottom of the eighth inning, but Michael Conti calms down, and we're through eight strong here at Bob Wren Stadium. 10-6 lead. Central Michigan, the defending MAC tournament champions, trying to win this series. We'll be back in a moment on Bobcat TV. Top of the ninth Four inning from Bob Wren Stadium. Central Michigan leads 10-6, to six, trying to win this series. Garrett Navarra steps in for Central Michigan. Dylan Masters, first pitch curveball misses high for ball one. Back with Cedric Granger. I'm Sam Hyman. What do you make of this game so far, Cedric? This has been pretty intense. Yeah, I mean, throughout the first five innings, it was just about the same script as you'd expect. High scoring, kind of back and forth, lots of lead changes. But ever since the sixth inning, Central Michigan has really taken over the game. It seems like as soon as Palm Blood came in, or Palm Blood came into the game for the Chippewas to pitch, he's really settled things down. And the Cats really have not found their footing since then. They have one more chance to respond but we'll see if Central Michigan will try to build on the lead to make it even tougher on the Cats. Pop up, third base side, and <laughs> luckily everybody gets out of the way of that foul ball. Very close, Look probably about four or five inches away from a hitting a fan. Yeah, our spectators dodging that and get potentially a souvenir. Nah, I've got to give it back. Got to give, <laughs> give it back. <laughs> Two, two, wave and a miss, strike three. Masters fired up after that punch out. He's got four strikeouts out of the bullpen. He has sent down the first seven batters he's faced in this game. Dylan Masters, the Murray St State transfer. And time is called. Yeah, if Masters keeps pitching like this, he's going to find himself in more and more games for the Bobcats. Could potentially rise up the ranks in this bullpen, being one of the top guys out of the oh pen yeah. for the Bobcats going forward. He's had a pretty solid season so far, 1-0, and uh, being able to pick up a win earlier on this year. And again, his ERA just going to continue to keep falling down and down. But it seems like it is the end of his day. Yeah, that's going to be it for Dylan Masters as he goes two and a third innings of scoreless ball. He didn't allow a hit, didn't allow a base runner. And that is it for Masters. So we will step aside, tell you about our new pitcher when we come back. Top of the ninth inning, Ohio trails Central Michigan 10 to 6. And you're watching all the action on Bobcat TV.
Patrick DeMarco comes on in relief as we resume action here in the top of the ninth inning. There's one out, and the first pitch is a called strike. And that is nothing and one. So Dylan Masters, two and a third innings of flawless baseball out of the bullpen as DeMarco looks to pick up right where Masters left off against this impressive Central Michigan team that has not missed a beat offensively so far this season for the most part. I mean, we were talking about this last half inning. Mario Camaletti, who led the team in batting average at 376. He was drafted in the eighth round of the 2022 MLB draft. No longer with the Chippewas, of course, in pro ball. Jacob Marcy drafted in the sixth round in the 2022 MLB draft. And Drew Lechner transferred to no Omaha, way. the University of Omaha. So Central Michigan has had to replace a lot of productivity on the offensive end as Luke Sefcik fouls this one off to the right side. And in this series, you know, we've seen guys like Robbie Morgan the fourth. Marquise Jackson, Garrett Navarra, step up. Yeah, that's what you have to do whenever you have a lot of turnover due to this transfer portal era, as well as the fifth year COVID season. You see a lot of different players. As DeMarco strikes out Sefcik, two away. And in those situations, you gotta have guys that are ready to step up. And those times, times it could be from people in junior colleges that are able to transfer over and are already having that college experience and having a lot of chances to start. And then sometimes you find it within your own team, some freshmen and sophomores that have developed, or guys like in the case of Billy Adams on OU, freshmen just coming right out the gate ready to go. Nick Dardis at the plate and he takes outside. One ball and no strikes. RBI double back in the fifth for Dardis. Fastball misses inside for a ball. 2 and 0. Ohio will have the 3, 4, and 5 hitters due up in the bottom of the ninth inning. Swung on and foul tipped into Minzie's mitt. 2 and 1. There's a ground ball into the Ohio dugout. Ten six lead for Central Michigan here in the top of the ninth inning. Small update, Ball State who was down 16 to 10 in the ninth. They have tied it up and have forced a 10th inning. It's 16 to 16. Oh, wow. Game's starting to go crazy out there in Muncie. <laughs> The pitch, and this is pulled foul down the left field line. Ball State, the preseason favorites in the Mid-American Conference, ahead of Central Michigan, picked second, and Kent State picked third. Cardinals off to an 11 and six start this season. Three and one in league play. An impressive team, Ball State. They were actually the number one seed in the MAC regular season. Despite Central Michigan winning it, Ball State was the top team by seed. Actually, was the Cats' first opponent in that double elimination MAC tournament. And then Ohio lost to Toledo in the following game. The Chippewas, fun fact about them, they were able to eliminate Ball State all on their own. The two losses that Ball State had to get out of there coming from the Chippewas. First pitch up and away for ball one to Justin Simpson. Two down here in the top of the ninth inning. Ohio trying to keep this deficit at four. Nothing worse. Outside, 2-0. Oh. 
Come on, Patrick. Come on, buddy. Patrick DeMarco with a two ball, no strike count on the mound. And that's up and away, 3 0. I'm getting to see Justin Simpson, who's a switch hitter, as the Bobcats kind of switching arms here in this inning. Dylan Masters, a lefty arm for this team, and now switching it up to a righty arm in DeMarco. And that is on the outside corner for a strike. It's three and one. Three and two. DeMarco paints the corner and a chance to bounce back after starting this AB three balls and no strikes. That is fouled back, so still full count. Ohio with six runs on eight hits, no errors. Central Michigan, 10 runs on eight hits, one error. Ohio has left eight runners on base today. The payoff, and it's fisted up in the air, shallow left center field, that blooper drops in. Simpson is aboard, and there are runners at first and third with two outs. All right, here we go. Come on now. Like you said, Sam, time and time again, no lead is safe. So if you're the Chippewas, you want to add on to this lead and as many <laughs> runs at it as you can because if we look at that, um, the other game of Ball State and Toledo, 16 to 10. It was a six-run deficit for Ball State, and it's all evaporated in the blink of an eye. So if you're the Chippewas, just kind of seeing that score – you want to make sure you have as much cushion as humanly possible. Tim Brown making another walk out to the mound. Yeah, that, that game, craziness in Muncie. 16-16 in the 10. Meanwhile, here Ohio trying to send this into the bottom of the ninth inning, only down by four runs. 10-6 lead. Series finale from Bob Wren Stadium. Game one, Ohio fell eight to five. They got down early seven to one and could not come back. And then in game two, the Bobcats won 11 to seven. Eight of their nine hitters recorded a hit. Jake Brill stands in. Here's a look at the head coach for Central Michigan. Jordan Bischel has to be pleased with the way his team has performed today after the loss yesterday. Took over this program in June of 2018. And has been absolutely fantastic. Steal down to second goes Justin Simpson with no throw. Second and third, two outs. Very wise there. You don't want to open up any opportunities at home plate. The 0-1 is a called strike on the bottom of the zone. Nothing in two to Jake Brill. O2 pitch is a breaking ball that misses down and in ball one. One ball, two strikes, second and third with two down. The pitch from DeMarco, swing and a miss. And that's strike three. So Central Michigan strands a pair and we go to the bottom of the ninth inning. Last chance for the Ohio Bobcats down 10-6 in the series finale. Come back and join us for the final frame on Bobcat TV.
confident about that. It's number 10, Mason Minzy. Last chance for the Ohio Bobcats as we start the bottom of the ninth inning. Mason Minzy, Alec Patino, Will Sturrock on this chilly day in Athens. Back with Cedric Ranger, I'm Sam Hyman. Michael Conti on the mound to try and finish the job. First pitch is outside for ball one. Ohio thought they were in business in the top in the bottom of the eighth inning, got the first two batters to reach, but nothing else. Now it's 2-0 to Minzy, who is two for three today with a homer, a single, a sacrifice fly, and a ground out. One change defensively for Central Michigan as the 2-0 misses up and in, 3-0. Kate Preston will play first base here in the bottom of the ninth inning in place of Robbie Morgan the fourth. Preston hit his first career homer yesterday. 3-0 is a fastball right down the middle, strike one. Bobcats need base runners and need them fast. 3-1 is grounded, first base side. Preston bobbles it, he just checked into the game and he makes a miscue. And now up for the Bobcats, number five, Alex. Minzy is safe at first. Make it back-to-back -back innings with errors in the infield for the Chippewas. They only had two errors throughout the entire series going into this game. Now they match that here in game number three. And now Alec Patino will stand in with a runner at first, nobody out. Bobcats looking for a rally. And that is upstairs, ball one. Patino pulled the bat back in time. Conti delivers, and that sticks to the outside corner, strike one. One ball and one strike to Alec Patino, who singled in the third and scored. Also walked today. 1-1. One, one. And that's low for ball two. Two balls and a strike. Ohio has played much better defense today. After the first two games, they committed three errors in the first game and two yesterday, zero today. Central Michigan has committed two errors today. The only thing for Ohio is their offense just went pretty quiet, really quiet after the third inning. Patino grounds this one sharply to short. Simpson flips it to second for one. Turn back to first is not in time to get Patino. Minzy is out at second. Will and that is the first out of the inning. Will Sturrock comes to the plate. Not the worst thing in the world, no double play ball, but you obviously you need base runners. You're down by four runs. Yeah, you needed something. I know the Cats, they've been victims to double play balls a couple of times this season. 14, which leads the Mac. Uh, but having your leadoff runner get clipped at second does not help the case. Sturrock takes, and that misses inside, ball one. Conti delivers, and the 1 0 misses high, two balls and no strikes. Smart of Sturrock here to be patient. The 2-0, and Sturrock stings it foul to the right side. Two balls and one strike. Will Sturrock homered back in the second inning. And singled in the third. And that is a strike, two and two. A chilly day here in Athens. 
as these two teams have battled all weekend long. It has been a, a weekend filled with crazy elements, weather, flurries, wind, some serious wind gusts. And Conti has to tie a shoe. Wonder if he does two bunny loops and then, you know, ties the knot or does one at a time. Yeah, you know, everybody has a <laughs> little bit of a different method for it. I was a uh, bunny loops guy myself for quite yeah. a while. Now I hate tying my shoe. I'm lazy. <laughs> <laughs> you got to get some Velcro. I just, I, just keep, I just keep my shoes tied. I don't untie them. I just slide them off. It's not a, not a good way to do it. All right, here's the 2-2. Two -two. And that misses outside. Three balls and two strikes. Chance here for Sturrock to extend the inning. Patino at first, and the payoff. Swung on and missed for strike three. And that is out number two. So Central Michigan is one out away from winning this series. Gideon Antle stands in their way as he makes his way into the righty batter's box. And the strikeout's really starting to add up now against the Bobcats. Uh, count 11 total from this pitching staff. After just striking out 16 times, Ohio did in the first two games, already 11 in this game. One ball and no strikes to Gideon Antle, who's t uh, one for four today. Antle pops this one up, and it should do it. On the infield, Luke Sefcik makes the catch, and that's the game. Central Michigan wins it 10 to six over Ohio and takes this series two out of three. The Chippewas improved to 11 and eight overall and two and one in the Mid-American Conference. Ohio falls to five and 12 and three and three in the MAC. Cedric, before we sign off quickly, your final thoughts on what was a competitive series. And today, unfortunately, the Ohio Bats just went quiet down the stretch. Yeah, well, Sam, we go back to what we started with, which was pitching and who was going to come out, who was going to make the most plays defensively, and who was going to be able to shut down the opponent's offense. And Central Michigan, they were able to do so, not yielding anything. From the sixth inning to the ninth inning, they got stingy. And thanks to pitchers such as Palm Blad and Conti, they were able to shut the door on not only the game, but the series. Ryan Palmblad picks up the win. Michael Conti earns the save. He pitched three shutout innings out of the bullpen. All right, that does it for us, for our great crew, our director, Jordan Bowes, my broadcast partner, Cedric Granger. I'm Sam Hyman, and our great crew on hand. We say so long from Bob Wren Stadium. Once again, your final score, Central Michigan 10, Ohio 6. A reminder, the Bobcats will be back in action at Moorhead State on Tuesday, and then our first road broadcast will be out in DeKalb, Illinois, where Northern Illinois hosts Ohio. Russ Eisenstein will be on the call. You can catch all the action next weekend on the Varsity app as the Bobcats hit the road this coming week. Have a great rest of your Sunday afternoon, everybody, and thanks for watching on Bobcat TV.